two, Dominican party time. Okay, yes, it's another Dominican. I think it's number three out of however many we've done, like six. Um, you're just gonna have to bear with me because, you know, Dominicans. Okay, so his name is Martin DeForest, if you haven't figured out by the time you clicked on the video. Uh, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. Anyway, so Martin DeForest is. Uh, we're going to talk about him more, obviously, but he is one of the, he's kind of, one, not an outlier Dominican, but he, he's different. He's different in um, the sense that he wasn't this big intellectual, he wasn't this big, like, oh, I'm going to be out there and preaching. He was just a humble little, not little, but humble brother who served. And we're going to go into that later, but for now, let's just learn some basic things about him. Martin de Porres. Kind of unique Dominican saint. Okay, so he was alive um, from 1579 to 1639. Uh, he was born in Lima, Peru, and then going into his early life, he was the illegitimate son to a Spanish nobleman and a freed slave, and his father abandoned his family and left him with nothing. Because you can imagine, like, his mom's a, a freed slave, she doesn't exactly have that much. Um, and so his mom took out her anger and hurt on Martin by physically and verbally abusing him and blamed him for his father's actions. He was the oldest, and he had a younger sister, and the father left right after the little sister was born. Um, and she took that out on Martin. And But despite all of this, he, Martin still smiled, he still loved his mother and still helped her as much as he could. Um, but she just didn't reciprocate the love. So, later when he was 12, his father finally acknowledged the fact that Martin was his son and uh, apprenticed him to a barber surgeon because barbers, in that time, if you were a barber, you pretty much were also the doctor. And so Martin learned um, to cut hair, but he also learned how to do basic medical procedures and st stuff like that. Uh, because he was mixed race, Spanish, and African, he was uh, discriminated against, and it was against the law to enter a religious order and take vows. But he wanted to give himself to the Lord so much that he volunteered to be a servant to the Dominicans in order, and in return, they would let him wear the habit and live with the community. So this happened when he was 15 years old. His father wasn't very happy about it. Um... But he took the skills that he learned earlier in helping his mom and learn and what he did with the barber. And, um, he took that into the monastery and um, used those gifts there. Um, and he considered doing all these little things a uh, very high honor because he was serving those who went and preached and took care of others. Moving into his adulthood, so after nine years, like, so when Martin was 24, the prior decided to disregard the law saying that Martin couldn't take vows because he was African and Spanish and allowed him to make vows as a third order Dominican. And uh, just moving like at, throughout his life because of his holiness and love and patience and the experience that he had, like I said before, he worked in the infirmary a lot. And be, he had a soft spot for orphans because the way he had been treated, like, he did his father left and his mom didn't treat him well so he was kind of um supposed to take care of himself and he founded an orphanage for abandoned children and slaves which is still around today in peru some of his spiritual gifts that he had so he loved our lady and the rosary and the eucharist and those are all things that are very core to dominican spirituality one of the reasons that he wanted to become a dominican and here are just some fun things. He could fly, he could bilocate, he could inst instantly cure people. He had miraculous knowledge, even though he didn't really go to school. He had profound knowledge on a very, on a natural level and on the spiritual level. And he was also, he had an excellent relationship with animals. He's called the Francis of Assisi of the Dominicans. And St. Dominic said this when he was dying, as like quote unquote his last will and testament, have charity, guard humility, and make treasure out of voluntary poverty. And Martin fulfilled that very perfectly as on a human level. Uh, and then here is one of my favorite quotes. 
with the Nashville Dominicans. Um, they have a little blurb about him on their website, and uh, I love this quote that they point out. St. Martin preached Christ through his charity, humility, and poverty. He stands as a holy reminder that in a religious order known for glorifying God by intellectual achievement, the greatest of these is love. So he's a reminder that even though intellect is important, and I hardly agree with that I'm an intellectual person, um, we always have to love or else all that means nothing. Here are two of my favorite quotes that um, he said. Compassion is preferable to cleanliness. With little bit of soap, I can clean my bed, but I think of the flood of tears I would require to clean from my soul the stain that harshness I can see unfortunate would leave. There's a story um, that he, um, that there was a sick brother who was quarantined and was either a brother or just a poor person, and they were, he started to go into the room, and the prior said, oh my gosh, no, you cannot go in there. And so he didn't go in at first, and then he went in later, and then they were like, why did you go in there? We told you not to go in there. And he said, well, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that we wouldn't, oh, shoot, I forget what he said, but it was like, I didn't realize that um, cleanliness was preferable to love. That's kind of where this quote came from. And then here, um, is another quote that I think of when I'm like sweeping, stuff like that. Even everything, even sweeping, scraping vegetables, weeding a garden, and waiting on the sick could be prayer if it were offered to God. See Martin de Porres, pray for us. What virtue do you think I'm going to talk about? What, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how service, the virtue of service. I'm pretty sure it's a virtue. Basically, any good habit can be a virtue, at least. Hopefully, that's not heresy. Um... But I'm going to talk about how he served. Uh, actually, when I did this for my, when I did Martin Depores for my Saint Journal, when I did, ah, I lost my page. When I did him for my Saint Journal, um, it was a, a service reflection. We have to do quarterly service hours, service hours every quarter. And at the time, and I still do, I do, I taught, helped, taught, help, I helped teach CCD or faith formation. So. Um, so we had to choose a saint who exemplified service, and we had to write a little bit of a reflection. And I was trying to connect Martin with my service, because I was like, okay, so Martin, he worked with the poor, he worked with the sick, he worked with the orphans. I'm teaching second graders that have a good family. Not, they have stuff. They're not poor they're not in poverty. They're not living in poverty. The parents bring them to CCD. Obviously, I don't think they're destitute. So I'm trying to make the connection here. And then I was like, okay, so he worked with sick. And then I think about some of the kids that I teach. I'm like, hmm. Some of these kids, they're spiritually sick. I mean, okay, they're second graders, so obviously, I'm thinking, you guys think math is a big waste of time. At seven years old, I thought math was a big waste of time. I thought math was a big waste of time until I was, like, 12. Or 11 or 12. I don't know. Um, so it's like, okay, so he worked with the physically sick. He worked at Corporal Works of Mercy. And I'm trying to heal the spiritually sick. I'm trying to do spiritual works of mercy. I'm trying to instruct the ignorant. And I thought that was a really cool connection just to think, you know, even though he did this and I do this, it, it's both still service. And um, part, that was like, that was one of the questions that was part of the reflection. The second one was, how can you strive to be like the saint? And what I wrote, this was earlier this year, quarter three of junior year, so earlier this year, I wrote, to be like Martin de Porres, I can try to give every good action and service to God as a small offering done with love. And if anybody knows about St. Therese, that sounds a lot like St. Therese, because Saint uh, Martin de Porres kind of had that same mentality, I can do everything for love of God. Every small action. I can sweep the floor, I can um, just give this sick person food, I can clean the toilets, I can do anything for love of God. And so, I know I was talking about, like, service where I'm out there spending my time, spending an hour and 15 minutes every Sunday teaching these kids or helping teach these kids because I am I'm not the head teacher, I'm the assistant teacher. 
Or we can just talk about the elements of service within the family, within the workplace, within our daily lives. It's like, I'm going to reach out and help this person in love. Um, the book that I had at the beginning is called Fountains of the Lord, and it's um, by Kevin Vos. Just a little shout out for this book. I lost my page, so give me a sec. Um, that's it, yes. Um, but it's about Dominican saints, because Dominican, I don't know if I've said this before, I don't know if I said this in the Dominic one, but Dominican is, translates, it's Latin for hounds of the Lord, literally. Domini is Lord, Canis is dogs. Just mind-blowing. Um, so he really plays on that, uh, metaphor. Um... I think, I think I brought it up with Dominic. Anyway, so I'm going to read this quote. This is a really good book. And Martin de Porres is one of the Dominicans that he talks about in here. Um, uh, but I'm going to read this quote. And he's talking about how... So Martin's towards the end of the book. He's talking about how he's been... How these other scenes that he has given the lives of. Dominic, Albert the Great, Thomas Aquinas, Catherine of Siena. These other crazy scenes who are like giant preachers, and they go and start these crazy, they start, start religious orders, or they go into ecstasies. Now, Martin did go into ecstasies, as I talked about in the PowerPoint. But, like, there's these crazy, or they do crazy mortifications, and he says, well, we can't all do that. Obviously, that's kind of, I'm going back to the St. Therese mentality here. We all can't be God's geniuses or movers and shakers of heaven and earth who change the world on a global scale, but every single one of us has the capacity to love if we simply accept the charity God infuses in our hearts and strive to make it grow by sharing it with others. We were listening to, um, sorry, Bishop Barron. We were listening to Bishop Barron, my family, we were in the car, listening to one of, uh, like, it was a brief homily or something. Talked about if you want to, I'm going everywhere, I'm sorry, in this video, but if you want to grow your faith, if you want your faith to be strong, share it. If you, so in the same way, if you want your love to be strong, share it, give it away. If you are grounded, like Martin was, in God, and you keep giving away, you're not going to be empty because you're rooted in the source of God. You're rooted in God, who is the source of love. So you're not going to run, you're not going to run dry. Um, so I've already been ranting for like six minutes, I realized, <laughs> Um, but, I don't know, I was everywhere in this video, so just, like, take some bits and pieces, uh, reflect on how you can grow in love and in service, even if it's just in your daily lives, if you can't go and spend an hour or three hours on service every week, because life is crazy, I know that. Um, but just think about how you can implement love and service into your lives, because, you know, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, service is a very good way to get holy and have fun doing it. I can do